Hello children, good morning. Today we are going to start the third lesson of the main course book, Flamingo. The title of this lesson is Deep Water and this is an autobiographical account. This is written by William Douglas who is a famous personality from America. He is the one who is the longest serving judge of Supreme Court of USA. Let's start this lesson. This lesson is dealing with phobia. What is phobia? Fear. Here, the writer develops how you develop the fear and how one can conquer that fear. So here, do you have a phobia? Do you have a fear about fire, height, water, insects, darkness and so on? If you have phobia of something, how can you overcome that? So definitely, you may be having some fear of height or water. How can you overcome that? This lesson teaches us a lesson. And this is an autobiographical account. So how he had developed fear of water and how did he overcome that fear of water? This is what is discussed by the writer William Douglas. Traumas or bad experiences can trigger a fear response within us that is hard to quell. In the childhood, you may develop that fear. It may be due to trauma, maybe very bad experience that you had at when you were child, or maybe in later age too. So the kind of experience you have, the bad experiences, that can trigger a fear. That can trigger fear in you, that can develop fear, uh, fear in you. So that is very difficult for you to suppress or quell. That is very difficult for you to get rid of it. And then again and again that fear haunts you and it becomes very difficult for you to get rid of that. And exposing ourselves to our personal demons is the best way to move past them, think about it. So the only way out is try to get rid of it, forget about all that, the past, whatever the experience you have. Because past is over, you have to think about the future and therefore what you should do is you should make efforts to get rid of that fear and how, and you have to think over it, come out with the strategy, how you can get rid of that fear, conquer that fear and lead happy life. Now let's study about the author. So introduction of the author. William Douglas is a famous person from America. Born in May, Minnesota, William O. Douglas graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in English and Economics. After working as a teacher for two years, he took up a career in law. So, soon after his graduation, he has worked as a teacher and then he has gone into the legal profession. He is the longest serving justice. So, he is the longest serving judge in the history of the law or in the history of Supreme Court of America. So, he has served nearly 36 years in the court as a judge. So that's why he is the longest serving judge so far in the history of law in America. He was a leading advocate of individual rights. So he fought for individual rights. He retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving judge in the history of the court. 
Now let us study what is the plot of this story. And what is the title of it? Deep water. So water, he had fear of water and how did he overcome that fear of water? That is what is discussed in this story. Deep water is an excerpt taken from Of Men and Mountains by William O. Douglas. It reveals how, as a young boy, he was nearly drowned in a swimming pool. So, when he was young boy, the kind of bad experience he had, he was not able to get rid of that bad experience. He recounts his fear of swimming following an incident in which he had been swept away by a wind. So, he mentions about two incidents. One when he was with his father, when he had gone to the beach. And the other one, when he was all alone in the swimming pool and he was thrown into the swimming pool. So he reveals about these two experiences which developed fear in him. So this particular incident, see when he was a child, he had gone with his father to the beach. Already that fear of water had set in because he was both virtually was swept away by waves. Now here in the second experience what has happened, he has been pushed in into the deep side of swimming pool by a young boy of 18 years old. So another incident which further aggravated his fear was when a bully pushed him into the deep side of so he pulled and he nearly drowned. But slowly and steadily he overcame his fear through determination and strong will. If there is a will, there is a way. So he finds the way out. How does he find the way out? How did he build the swimmer in him? Remember that he was very much afraid to go near water. And he becomes a very good swimmer. So how it is possible to become a good swimmer. How one can get rid of the phobia? So if you have got any phobia, you can always get rid of it, but you have to have a plan and get rid of that. And this story is very inspirational, it's very motivational. So another incident which he talks about that, which I had aggravated, which had increased his fear, that is the incident in which he was pushed by a bully, by a young fellow, and he was nearly down there in that particular swimming pool. That is why I say swimming pool. But slowly and steadily, he has overcome that fear, he has conquered that fear, and he has become a very good swimmer. Now, in order to become a good swimmer, what does he do? He takes the services of an instructor. So that instructor has built him, him a good swimmer step by step. He also swam in different rivers. See, after that, not only that he got rid of that fear, but he could swim in rivers, he could swim in lakes and seas to overcome his fear. The title also signifies that the author's fear was deep rooted. Why deep water? Because that fear was deep rooted and it was a very difficult for him to get rid of it. And you see the way he struggled to get rid of that fear of water. Now let us go to the summary and analysis of this particular chapter. Remember that here the author gives very vivid description of his fear of water and how did he overcome that fear of water. The story unfolds the incident in which the author tells us got almost drowned in the YMCA swimming pool while he was young. So this particular incident, there are two incidents. One is when he had gone with his father to the beach and another incident which was a misadventure. The young boy had come and he had just thrown him into the deep side of the pool. He was not aware that 
he was not a swimmer. He had developed the fear of water at an extremely young age during his visit to a beach in California with his father. So when he was a very small child, he had gone with his father to the beach. Actually, he had developed that fear that particular time. Now here, when he was thrown into the swimming pool, he really had great fear now. And he always wanted to out, remain away from water. But due to his determination, owing to his willing willpower, he builds up himself a good swimmer and then he becomes really a good swimmer. Not only gets rid of, rid, rid of fear of water, but also becomes a good swimmer. Whales swept over him and left him buried in water. So when he had gone to that street, uh, when he had gone to that beach, at that time what has happened? The huge waves have swept over him and he was virtually buried in that water. As a child he was terrified due to that what I said that had happened at the beach. So that has bred a permanent fear of water in his subconscious mind. And then he started going to the YMCA pool. He wanted to learn swimming. He wanted to get rid of that because he felt that rather than going to Yakima River, it would be better if he goes to YMCA pool, swimming pool in Yakima. Yakima is a town there in America. So he wanted to learn swimming. So therefore he started going to YMCA pool. And what is the long form of YMCA? Young means Christian association. So one day while he was sitting by the side of the pool, a muscular teenage boy, that's a bully here, the muscular boy suddenly played a dangerous prank. So he wanted to play kind of prank, he wanted to play kind of trick and he just pushed him into the deep end of the pool. He was not aware, it was not that he wanted to kill him, but he just wanted to play a prank. But it would have virtually killed him. Terrified, he at once sank to the bottom of the pool. He struggled hard to come to the surface, but some force seemed to be pulling him down. So there he provides his vivid description. So when he was into the water, what happened? When he was getting drowned, then what happened? So somehow he survived, others they helped him to bring him out of that and he doesn't tell us who has brought him out but he tells that he was brought out and then this bully he just said I just tried to play a prank, I never thought of killing him but he tells us the kind of experience that he had when he was getting drowned. His legs were paralyzed and his heart was pounding. Virtually, legs were paralyzed. He was not able to do anything. He wanted to actually somehow manage to come out of that, but he was not able to do that. His heart was pounding, his heart was beating. He looked for ropes, ladders, and water things, but all in vain. But it was of no use. He was moving towards peaceful death and he thought that. Is going to die, and that experience that coming very close to death that also he narrates, he was at peace. When he came to consciousness, he found himself lying on the side of the pool with the other boys nearby. So somehow he is rescued and is brought on the side of the swimming pool. So when he was lying there, he understands that somehow he has survived. The terror that he had experienced, the fear that he had, so it was a very terrifying experience. The fear that he had experienced in the pool never left him. So that remained in his subconscious mind and it went on haunting him. It remained with him for years. So he was not able to get rid of that fear, but he decides to get rid of that fear. And what does he do to 
get rid of that fear. It spoils many of his expeditions of canoeing, swimming, and fishing. So he wanted to go for fishing or canoeing. He was not able to enjoy that because that fear was haunting him. Fear of water was haunting him, and therefore he decides to get rid of that fear. It spoils his pleasures in the lakes near New Hampshire, the shoots. Columbia and Bombay Lake, etc. So when you wanted to go for swimming, when you wanted to go for fishing, he was not able to enjoy it there. So therefore, he decides to get rid of it. That traumatic experience chased the dust with an incessant fear of water. So it rained down, haunting him. It remained with him. He didn't even go near for many years. So he couldn't go near water for many years. The thought of Roosevelt that this terror and the fear of them. So here he says, the fear is there in the fear of them. You are afraid that you are going to die, and that's why you are afraid. So the fear is there in the fear of them. A deep impact on him. What Roosevelt had. Told, and that's why he wanted to get rid of it. Eventually, he decided to shed this fear and engage an instructor who could teach him how to swim. So, what he does, he hires an instructor. He engages an instructor, and he builds in him a good swimmer who could later swim in rivers and lakes. The instructor gave him thorough training in swimming as well as in breathing under water. He practiced for several weeks. So what the instructor has done, he has taught swimming face by face, stage by stage. First he saw that he got rid of the fear of water, and then step by step he has built. A swimmer in. So he has taught him breathing under water. He not only taught him playing swimming, but he also taught him breathing under water. He practiced for several weeks. Finally, he learned swimming. But the terror, that is fear, fear of water continued. Whenever he was in water, the terror returned. That was strike to terrorize terror itself. So later on, he goes on challenging that fear itself. Oh, you are scaring me. Okay, let's see what happens then. Like. So there was a kind of challenge, and there was a kind of mind game. He started playing, and when he started playing that mind game, you see the kind of change that comes in him, and he becomes a very strong person. He gets rid of that fear. Not only that, he becomes a very good swimmer. He tried to face new challenges. So now, not only swimming pool, he decides to go out and swim alone in order to completely eliminate his fear, to get rid of his fear. He once went to Lake Vanguard, dived into it off a dock at Kings Island, and swam two miles across the lake. So one time. He was so much afraid to go near water, but see him. He goes to the lake there, went forth, and he swam two miles across that lake. He confronted fear and plunged into the water as if to defy the fear, to disobey the fear. So he went on challenging himself. He was ready to face the fear now. Once he took courage, the terror was vanquished. So he was able to overcome that. He was able to defeat that terror, that fear. He faced the challenges deliberately in various places, like the warm lake. So he started going to different places and he started swimming there. Then from Edward, he has come down, come to warm lake. Then he conquered it at last. He ultimately defeated his fear of water and emerged a winner. And here, beating on oneself.
So let's see the characteristics. Remember here, the most important character here is actually the narrator, the author. That's a William Douglas himself, because he is narrating his experience, and it's an autobiographical account. As a child, Douglas was hydrophobic, and he never dared to go near water. So, what is hydrophobic? The one who has fear of water, hydrophobia. The one who has fear of water is hydrophobic. In order to overcome the fear, he joined swimming classes in the YMCA pool. He had a horrifying drowning experience in which he almost died. He decided to learn swimming through an instructor. So here he decides to learn swimming through an instructor. He tirelessly swam for many hours in a way. His willpower and determination motivated him to become a perfect swimmer in six months. The dedication and never give up attitude made him get rid of his hydrophobia. Many people live with their fear all through their life and do not try to win over. So, how you can overcome that? About that, we have stopped here in this particular story. So, this is a very, very motivational story where he talks about his own experience. But Douglas, with his strong will and determination, it's a willpower. That's what matters a lot. Your perseverance, your determination will matter a lot. And within six months, he could become a very good swimmer. So if you have got any phobia, if you really decide if there's a will, there's always a way. So if you have got any phobia, try to get rid of that phobia. So there's a message in this lesson. And it's because of strong will and determination he has decided to turn his weakness into his strength. Once he perfected his skills, he crossed two miles across the long lake. He was able to beat his fear completely and live a completely normal life. So he's able to lead a normal life just because he was able to get rid of that fear. So later on, definitely, we could go for fishing, we could go for country boating. So the theme of this story is, one can completely conquer one's fear if one understands the truth contained in the words of Israel. And what does Israel say? All we have to fear is fear itself. All our terrors and fears are psychological. We only need to be determined and courageous enough to get face to face with our fear. Douglas was able to overcome his fear of water only by becoming a competent swimmer. So what is very important is here, if you decide to get rid of it, then definitely you will be able to get rid of the phobia. So this lesson tells us how William Douglas developed the fear of water and how did he conquer fear of water.